We have a concerning weather setup that's starting to build as we head into the first couple of days of April. If we take a look at the overall satellite picture this afternoon, we're actually coming down. We're on the back half of a very active setup over the last couple of days, but we're still ringing out some snow showers starting to wind down at last check up there in Duluth this morning. They were already up to 17 inches of snow and you be, better be sure they've probably added to those totals since. But that storm system is on the move out east. We are concerned about a little bit elevated storms and for those areas into Michigan and areas into western Indiana as well as into Ohio later on this afternoon. Not really a tornado threat, but some of those could be some larger hail and definitely some damaging winds. But very heavy rain as this continues to push off into the east coast and really setting up over the Carolinas and really along those coastal areas along the east coast we definitely could be picking up some more heavy rain. In fact, if we break it down over the next two days where the rainfall is going to set up, it's mainly across the southeast because that continues to push off to the east. And some of these totals, especially down there into Florida, down there into northern Florida here, could actually pick up another one to three inches of rainfall. But it's mainly along these coastal areas. The further you live along the coast, definitely the heavier rains that will be as we lift up the coastline here. But there's the snow trying to wind down and there's that system that will continue to push off to the east coast. So we're likely gonna be picking up another inch or two for those areas into Tennessee, back into Kentucky, all the way up into portions of Ohio as well. And we'll have a little short wave that will be moving across the west coast. We'll actually set up taking advantage of some of the heating into the afternoon. I think areas further south in the, in the Dallas Fort Worth area into East Texas, they could be looking at some stronger storms. Not terribly too severe, but definitely some stronger storms as we head into tomorrow afternoon. But as we go into Friday, and you can follow the time and date of the upper right hand corner of the screen, looking at the jet streams, because here's all eyes will trend back out west, because that's going to be our next main player. And the jet stream does buckle out west, but it also flattens out and becomes more of a, a zonal flow. And you can actually see what we're talking about as Further off to the north, that's the cold slot of air. But if you live south of this boundary, that's going to be the warm slot. And those temperatures are really going to be elevated. So I'm looking at some very warm conditions starting to enter the picture for those areas across the southern plains as those temperatures are going to spike all the way through your Easter weekend, really all the way into the first couple of days of April, while the northern area is going to be experiencing another cold shot of air. Yes, we're talking it's actually going to be bringing more snow for a lot of the same areas that just got some this week. So here's the setup as we head into Saturday, the 30th. We are going to be seeing those elevated temperatures further south into Texas, back into Oklahoma. That should actually swing all the way up into Missouri, back into Illinois. Well, we are watching that more significant trough that will be diving in off the west coast. That's going to be bringing a renewed threat of much colder air and actually another renewed threat for more snow across those areas into Montana and back into Wyoming. And yes, more rain for those areas into California, because by the time we head into your Sunday for your Easter Sunday, you can see actually where the low pressure is right off the southern California coast. And inland, that's where the snow is going to be flying into Nevada, back into Idaho, as well as into Wyoming, into Montana, and even getting, in, getting into the Utah region as well, as some of that beneficial range will, will likely start to squeeze into Arizona as well. But those temperatures definitely are going to spike. So it's going to be a, a compounding effect of a building process over the next couple of days. But I do feel we're going to be maxing out, if you will, at by the time we head into that Monday, April the 1st. This is about seven days away. But look at the temperatures, folks. Yeah, you're creeping back into the 90s, something you hadn't seen actually since late February. Those temperatures are really going to be starting to elevate for Texas, even to the Dallas Worth area, they could approach 90 degrees and even into Oklahoma, mid 80s. So those temperatures are gonna be lifting all the way further north into Kansas, back into Missouri, as well as into Illinois. And that kind of gives you an indication, especially with this dynamic 
uh, these upper level winds are, are going to be buckling the jet stream out west, that could set the stage for a fairly significant severe weather event for Monday heading into Tuesday, especially with some of those higher temperatures. That would be a, at least 10 to 15 degrees warmer than what we saw with this last severe weather threat. So yes, we have potentially another significant severe weather threat going to be on the table. And this is going to be a little bit more concerning because it's got a lot of moisture to work with. So we got the cold front that came in now that's cleared into the Gulf Coast. But those that southwest wind's going to kick in and you've got about five or six days for moisture return, almost actually seven. So that's plenty of time to really fuel the atmosphere and the upper levels. And once we got those upper level winds, uh, start tapping into some of that energy and looking at the dew points, especially as the dry line starts to get active into the afternoon hour on Monday. Yes, those dew points are going to be elevated all the way into the mid 60s, even upper 60s could unfold into a good part of Texas, lifting into Oklahoma as well as into Missouri and back into Illinois as well as that dry line does get active. So right now it does appear we could be having a, a severe weather threat l literally setting up shop across Texas all the way through Arkansas back into Missouri and lifting all the way up into Illinois into Indiana and back into Ohio. That would be a similar zone that you saw in the middle of March with that more significant event that caused a lot of big time hell producing storms and unfortunately many tornadoes with that particular setup. We could have a potentially a, a similar type setup likely trying to unfold in that Monday into that Tuesday time frame. So definitely a little bit concerning, especially if those temperatures elevate all the way to 90 degrees. And yes, we do have a much stronger cold front still to come after you recover from this fairly stronger cold front that just came through. So you know, right now, nothing official from the Storm Prediction Center because they still are kind of iffy because we're still uh, still a little ways out. But the learning model is already on it as well as the la latest uh, SIPS model as well. Having that guidance likely going to originate in into the heart of Texas there, especially northern Texas, that would likely swing through Oklahoma as well as into Arkansas, back into Missouri. And what those dew points creeping so far north Definitely not out of the question. That zone could all the way likely would include Illinois, Indiana, as well as Ohio as we head into that Monday, April the 1st time frame. And there's the setup on the temperature map as the temperatures really start to max out. I showed you the temperatures down there in Texas of almost 90 degrees. And that warm surge surges well north all the way up into southern Wisconsin. So could be a fairly significant event as well as we got another stronger push of much colder air coming in from the northwest and this is where you typically see severe weather this time of year as we head into the month of april going to be a, a likely a very busy month on the severe weather front april and may are two two of your most active months and this is typically where you you would likely see tornadoes if they do come to fruition up there in portions of North Texas and Oklahoma and Arkansas back into Mississippi and Alabama would include those areas in Kansas, but it's not out of the question. It could be lifting as far north as Iowa back into Illinois and into Indiana as well as Ohio. So the moisture surge lifts that far north and they definitely have some higher temperatures. They got the trough out west and the very colder air mass coming down the backside of that cold front. Now, the good thing about this cold front, at least of right now, it looks to be fairly fast moving. So right now it does appear Monday would likely be the most significant day. But as we head into Tuesday, that severe weather threat would likely push much further south, would include those areas into the southeast. Similar, similar areas where they actually saw severe storms last night back into Louisiana, into Mississippi, as well as into Alabama would likely include portions of Georgia as we head into that Tuesday, April the 2nd. And that's where the warm temperatures would likely be still within the warm sector as we have a very potent system of more snow that would likely unfold 
from the Rockies all the way up through uh, Wyoming, getting into Nebraska again, would likely extend into those areas into South Dakota, as well as into Minnesota and back into portions, at least northern portions of Wisconsin as we head into the last last, you know, last couple of days, first couple of days of April. But that cold front will be that uh, cold front will be on the move. So by the time we head into Wednesday, potentially April the third of next week, that would likely be off the East Coast again. Similar setup where you got the rain right now, right? But then you'd have much clearing on the backside. Look at all that brown there. That's an indication of clearer skies and and, and uh, clearing out the atmosphere. So unfortunately, that's not when the uh, solar eclipse is, because if it would be, there's a lot of areas that would actually have really nice conditions. So it's one of those things you got to time just right in the month of April, because it's very active. You get these systems every couple of days. So if you're within the zone, I know a lot of people are going to be traveling this for this event. It's a big time deal, folks. So we'll be fine tuning the solar eclipse forecast. We're still a tad bit away out for sure, but unfortunately, it's not the third. <laughs> so this will be moving out and likely be reinstabled again as we get deeper into the fourth and fifth. So, but overall, it does appear to be a fairly active time frame as we head into April because we are going to be seeing. Some warmer conditions highlighted over the central and eastern two-thirds of the U.S. While we do have fairly significant trough set up again out west, and that typically spells trouble for severe storms. So these waves of energy will be moving across, and we could be looking at these active setups every four or five days or so. So that's definitely something we'll be keeping an eye on as we get deeper into the month of April. But overall, we still got snow to contend with. With these cold blasts that still come in, we are going to be favorable for more snow that's coming off those regions. So back through the Intermountain West, we're going to have another swath that would likely come through uh, Wyoming and back into Montana that would extend in northern portions of Nebraska and back through the Dakotas again and more snow for those areas into Minnesota and Wisconsin. You couldn't buy snow all winter and now it's not stopping, <laughs> right? So yes, we have another system coming in on the table, but overall here's the precipitation front uh, between now and Monday. So I think it's calm really for the mid part of the country besides that little short wave that comes through tomorrow afternoon. But mostly this middle part of the country along the Southern Plains is gonna be dry. So you have this system highlighted across the Ohio Valley now that will continue to move off the East Coast. And then yes, we'll have that secondary system that starts to make impact for those areas into California as we head into Friday, and that sneaks into the Intermountain West regions as we head into the weekend and heading into that first part, first couple of days of April, while the Southern branch, I think, gets going into the nighttime hours on Monday. And this area across the middle of the country should light up with severe storms by then as we get closer to that event. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch my next update while i'll protect you before and after the storm